Welcome back. You're listening to Final Extra on TalkSport 2. Let's now look at the rest of Saturday night's card. We've spoken about AJ versus Otto Volume. We've spoken about uh, Wilder versus Parker. There are still uh, so many other good fights on the card as well, including, I think, the best light heavyweight on the planet. Some people might argue and say that that guy is Otto Baturbi. I mean, you could be right, but I think it's Dimitri Bivol. He takes on Lyndon Arthur. Um, very, very tough ass this one for Lyndon Arthur. But, um, you know, activity is a big thing in boxing. And this is Dimitri Bivol's first fight this year. But surely Dimitri Bivol gets this one done and then sits on the sidelines and waits for the winner of Baturbia versus Smith, which would only be a few weeks later. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's a fight again that we're looking forward to in 2024, Addy, is... Uh... If it happens, um, if, if as you say, if Arta Betabia comes through Callum Smith in Quebec City uh, in January, I'm going to that one as well. Uh, really looking forward to that. Um, uh, well, look, Lyndon Arthur was limping around a little bit um, at the press conference as well in London when the Day of Reckoning was announced. And he said he was fine. It was just a, a minor injury. Um, I just, I see Lyndon Arthur potentially going 12 rounds with Bivol because Bivol is very comfortable in there and, and fights within his own skin, doesn't overstretch himself. Technically, he's very, very gifted. I agree with you. He's, he is potentially the number one, but I'd love to see that fight between he and Better Beev next year or Smith, Callum Smith. Mm. Um, but I just think Bivol's too clever, too smart, fights within himself, incredibly efficient, um, and I see a wide points decision for Bivol, or if he really wants to go for it, a late stoppage. Yeah, if he wants to turn it up on Lyndon Arthur, he can. But again, he, he's so comfortable just cruising to a points decision. But it'd be nice to see him actually go through the gears and really make a statement to the rest of the division. All right, this fight is the one that I think a lot of people are calling potentially fight of the night. No one can seem to pick a winner here. And that's Danny Dubois versus Jarrell Miller. It's not a fight we ever predicted we'll see. It's not a fight that we thought of. But now it's here. It's very exciting. It is exciting to see. I've absolutely no idea how this fight plays out. Yeah, well, um, I see Jarrell Miller is already helping himself to um, the big buffet in the Seven Star Hotels in, <laughs> uh, in Riyadh. Um, he's a big boy. I mean, he's probably going to be 300 pounds plus when he steps in there um, on Saturday night. Um, I've stuck my neck on the block for this one. I think Gerald Miller is a much better boxer than people realise and give him credit for. And I think unless Daniel Dubois can impose himself on Gerald Miller, I think I think Miller wins this fight. And I think he wins it by stoppage in around seven, six, seven, eight rounds. I just think Daniel Dubois, as I say, if Daniel Dubois gets stuck into Gerald Miller early, I think he could put him away. But the longer the fight goes, the worse for him. Um, so I'm going Gerald Miller. It's a 50-50 fight. Um, but I just think that Miller has got a second lease of life. There's people that believe he shouldn't even be in the ring, obviously because yeah. of his positive d- drugs tests in the past um, and the kind of drugs that he's taken. But uh, he seems to have turned the corner in his life in that sense. Um, yeah, and I'm going Gerald Miller. I don't know about you. Yeah, I think it's a 50-50 fight up until round five. And then I almost feel like Daniel Dubois, unfortunately, starts to peel away a little bit. And I think if Jarrell Miller is anything like the Jarrell Miller of old, where we know how many punches he used to throw around, then I expect Jarrell Miller to come through. And I do think that mentally he's already got under Daniel Dubois' skin and he's going to do it all week as well. He's super confident. He now sees that there are massive fights out there for him. Like, I think we are going to see AJ Jarrell Miller for some reason. And that's the carrot being dangled in front of him. So I expect Jarrell Miller to stop. Danny Dubois late in that fight. Uh, Jai Pattaya versus Ellis Zora. Obviously, there's an interesting background story that I'm sure you're aware of with the IBF basically saying they're going to strip of Pattaya if he fights Ellis Zorro. Um, Jai Pattaya said, I'm fighting, almost stuck middle finger up to the IBF, which, look, I mean, ultimately it's about winning belts and making sure you, you cash in. Jai Pattaya's won the IBF, now it's time to cash in, so I don't blame him. But what do you make of the IBF saying that you have to fight Marius Bredo, so we're stripping you? Well, I mean, Ellis Zorro, I remember when this fight was announced, he's not in the top 15 with the IBF, so they're, they're perfectly within their rights to do so. But yeah. like you say, the, the, the swivelling digit back at them is, is one of those things that 
um, this is professional boxing and money talks. Um, it's yeah. a business as much as it is a sport. And it's if he doesn't want the glory here of the belt, what he wants is to earn, arguably, maybe he's earning three times as much as he would if he was fighting outside uh, the kingdom of Saudi Arabia. So it's a clear indication that um, it's about earning potential when you get to that level. I don't think um, he'll be too bothered about not having the IBF title because Jaya Pattaya, if he beats Ellis Zorro, which I think he will, I, think, I don't think Zorro has the wherewithal to beat Opataya, who, if he's in good shape afterwards, may well go into camp with Tyson Fury uh, for his sparring uh, against uh, in, in training for uh, Alexander Usyk on February the 17th. Um, but he's out there. Chris Billum-Smith, Richard Riakpour, um, Badu Jack, all these guys, they'll all want to face uh, Opataya or not face Opataya. But he, it's, it's not going to be difficult for him to get into world title fights, even without a belt. Yeah, three other heavyweight title fights, or tight, sorry, three other heavyweight fights on the card. Hergovic versus Mark Demore, Aslan back Mahmoudov versus Agit Kabiel, which could be an incredible fight, and Frank Sanchez versus Junior Far. I don't want to complain because we've been given so much, but it is a shame that we're not just seeing Hergovic versus Frank Sanchez, but I'm asking for too much. It's a great fight card. Again, myself and Gareth will be out there, and we'll be looking back on it next week where we round up not just that fight card, but the whole year as well. Hopefully we give out some awards, fighter of the year, knockout of the year. And that is it. What a year it has been in boxing. And let's hope that we can round it out with a fantastic event in Saudi Arabia. Gareth, I'll see you out there, my man. And we'll catch you all guys next week.